you're welcome to my channel if you're new here you're very very welcome please like and subscribe and also comment okay so today we'll be having a movie review so i'll be reviewing this movie that i watched recently this movie is so so powerful it actually blessed me like i could literally relate with every every scene in the movie so i was so blessed by it so i decided to share it with you guys and the title is the bond so it's i think it's it's from the vision careers international or maybe in conjunction with monzion family so okay so i listed a lot of points i hope this video is not so long because i want you to watch it till the end so, right, so yeah i recommend this movie for you your family your loved ones your friends especially youths yes to the youths this movie is for you and okay yeah so you can just watch it on um uncle dami's channel or um damlola mcbabloe's channel it's there on his channel so just watch and be blessed be blessed 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 okay so let's dive right in <laughs> okay so i listed some points like i said earlier that i'll be explaining by the help of the holy spirit okay so the first scene was this one What? As mom be fine. Huh? As mom be fine. Your mom? See, I have told you, your mom is not missing. Okay? She left and she's not coming back. Stop disturbing me! <laughs> Tony. Come here. Dooney, Dooney. Yeah, you are surprised, right? Don't worry. Um, meet the new members of our family. Um, this is my beloved Adike <laughs> and our children. So, children, introduce yourself to your big sister. Excuse me. Point of correction. She is actually older. My name is Shannon. Mommy, look how you doing it. Shh. Get some time to. Interested in your trying. The fellowship can never miss me. Okay, the devil reminds you of your past. God does not. God does not remind you of your past because his word says that if you are now in Christ, old things are passed away, 
behold all things have become new so god does not owe the record of your past that's why the bible says that if god decides to keep the records of sin who will stand eh? who can stand nobody nobody can stand if god decides to keep records of sin like our list will be like this it will be long so no one can stand so god god does not keep a record of sin god does not keep a record of your past once you are in you are in him you are a new creature and all things are gone all things are gone so only the devil brings your past reminds you of your past only the devil brings those thoughts to you i mean you can actually think about your past in a good way and think about your past and just give glory to god that oh that is all gone it's no longer it's no longer a part of me whatever i had done it is gone i am no longer that person i am now a new creature and you just give glory to god for saving you and for you know seeing you through whatever you went through but if you think about your past and you're just so overwhelmed you're so frustrated you're so unhappy yeah you know you're just so dejected and full of sorrow then there is a problem that means the devil was reminding you about it and you need to counter it sharp sharp with the word of god and have you noticed that when you're going through a little challenge that's when the devil comes and you'll be reminding you about some problems that have not been solved you'll be reminding you about various things various negative things you'll be reminding you of the people that do not like you the people that did not compliment you the people that you know did not you you know you'll just be reminding you of things that do not go well with you and you just sum it all up become so overwhelmed and frustrated and just decide that the next thing is to take your life commit suicide or or just conclude that life is meaningless and there's nothing to live for anymore you know it just does those things it reminds you of the people that don't care about you it reminds you of awful things you know it never reminds you of the good things it never reminds you of the person that complimented you it never reminds you of the person that gifted you without you having any celebration or anything it would never remind you of the times that people prayed for you people that you don't even know just decided to walk up to you and just pray for you You know it would not remind you of those good things it would not remind you of of the great things that god has done the gift of life and different different beautiful gift of how he even loads us daily with benefits it will not remind you of all those things it would only remind you of the hurtful things just like he, he, he did to do me here was reminding her of you know the way her mom left her the way her dad did not really care the way her stepmom maltreated her the way her stepsister and brother charles and shade the way they you know they they, they hated her and the way the fellowship leader was was always attacking her you know it was just reminding her of different and it was also reminding her of the lady that you know just just um concluded that Duny was not a good person and all you know he was just reminding her of various things like that and she just concluded that the there's nothing there's nothing to live for anymore she 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 was thinking that if if she kills herself now that no one will ask of her no one will miss her you know the devil just brings these thoughts and the only way we can actually counter these things is by the word of god it is by the word of god the devil cannot stand the word of god never he needs to give the give the devil is is the the thing he hates most he needs to give the devil what's what is what's what's he opposes you know he needs to give the devil what will make him flee you know the bible says that resist the devil and he would flee from you if you do not resist him he would not flee and how can you do that through the word of god confessing it confess see many times the devil comes to us because he, he knows that we are not aware of our identity he knows that we don't know who we are he knows that we don't know our rights so he comes and he attacks but the moment you begin to confess your rights the moment you begin to confess the word of god the moment you begin to confess your identity in christ he is aware that oh this one has woken up oh, this one is no longer sleeping. Oh, I need to. I need to take my leave now. I need to take my leave. So that's just how it works. If the devil reminds you of awful words, if the devil reminds you of of negative things, then remind him about the word of God. Remind him about your God. Remind him about who your God says you are. Remind him about who Jesus says you are. Let him know that you know who you are. You know your rights. You know your responsibilities as a child of God. 
Yes, so I pray that the Almighty God will always help us to shun the devil. The Almighty God will always help us to resist the devil and not to nurture his words in our hearts in the name of Jesus. That's Okay, so the next scene is this one right here. Since our tenure started, mm. it's hard to think of one progress that we've made. Sincerely, I'm tired. At this point, our only hope is prayers. Uh, I can think of nothing else. Honestly, honestly. I've been thinking lately. Okay. I think we should have prayers for the air schools and the fellowship at large. Uh. Are you mean? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. sure. What about Duni? Do you think she would be interested? Mm -hmm. Duni has been quite withdrawn lately. She thinks she needs of prayer. <laughs> All right. We also need to pray for Shino. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that brother lately. Felix and um, Turayo, they just, you know, decided to. They did not even decide. <laughs> They, they, you know, they, they realized that there was a problem, and that's that. That brings me to this second point: that to get out of a problem, you must first realize that there is a problem. Because if you do not realize that there is a problem, how would you even feel the need to even, you know, solve it or to even find a solution to it when you don't even know that there is a problem? So, for you to get rid of a problem, for you to to, to solve a problem, you must first realize that there is a problem. You must first realize that there is a problem. And they realize this. They realize that everything seems to be falling apart. They realize that there was no unity in the fellowship among the executives. There was no unity. Even the executive members are falling, you know. So they realized it by the help of the Holy Spirit because these things are not ordinary. So they, they realized this and they... And they and they and they saw the need to pray. They saw the need to pray. That's another thing. Another thing is for you. For one thing is for you to know a problem. Another thing is for you to realize that there is a need to pray. Because you can you can know that you can just be aware that okay there is a problem, but you don't know what to do. Maybe because you are not in Christ, or you know you don't know what the the direction to go. So they realized that there was a problem and they also realized that there is a need to pray, that only prayer can solve this problem. You know, many times we belittle prayer, you know, we underrate prayer, we are, we are just like, it takes time. And we just, that, that is one of the tactics of the enemy, to make you feel, to make you prayerless, to make you prayerless. It does not want you to pray. It does not want you to do anything. So it just usually, you know, cloud cloud our faces so that we we do we do not see that we need to pray. So God opened their eyes and they realized that there was a need to pray. There was a need to pray for the fellowship and for the leaders. And you know, God actually wants us to do this. God actually wants us to intercede. God wants us because the, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 2 verse 1, it says that supplications, prayers, and thanksgiving should be made for all men. All men. And you know, it went further in verse 2 and 3, talking about how when you do this, you would live a peaceable life. You live a peaceable, a peaceable life. And you know, when you what, what does it mean to live a peaceable life? That means you're at peace. And when you're at peace, when you're at peace, it means that your ways are pleasing God. Because even the Bible says that when your ways please God, it will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. So God wants us to do this. God wants us to intercede. God wants us to pray for others. So I ask you today, are you praying? Are you praying for others? Are you praying for that brother in your church that is falling? And instead of praying, people are just talking about him and, and wondering what is wrong with him instead of interceding for him. What are you doing about that sister? That sister that has stopped coming to church. That sister that is no longer interested in the things of God anymore. That sister that her love for God is going cold and you know her. What are you doing about her? What are you doing about your church? Are you praying for your church? Are you interceding for Nigeria? 
you know people just tend to complain nigeria is this nigeria is that what are you doing about it are you interceding for this country you state that there is a problem what are you doing about it are you praying about it so god wants us to pray he said prayer supplication and thanksgiving should be made for all men leaving no one out all men so i pray that as from today the almighty god will help us to always intercede will help us to pray for others effortlessly so easily by the help of the holy spirit in jesus name so that brings me to the third point which is this scene so funny attitude towards that make sure your head is correct this is okay this is okay okay don't even dare it. Don't bring any other person here. It is Chiamaka. You know, I don't have much to speak with you, Ebel. All I want is him to go out and kill Lotta. If you dare to go to another place, I will not go with you. Don't even call me. I'm not a party to that. All I know, Chiamaka come to. Bye bye. And we move on now. Go on. Uncle Steven, I am just so confused. I'm torn between two options. On one hand, I do not want to offend my mom. I do not want to hurt my close friend Amaka. But then, on the other hand, I also want to follow God's leading for my life. Sir. I hate to see Duni hot. It's just all so hard. Hmm. Hey, Billy. Sir. We get to make some hard choices at some points or the other, don't we? Yes, sir. The bottom line is you must make your choice. At Crossroads, the Holy Spirit shows us the way. But you have your choice to make. So, hey, Billy. What is it going to be? Sir, I, I don't even know what to say to my mom. I have never defiled her. Hmm. There are no easy ways out of some things. You just have to receive wisdom to face her. You need to tell Amaka the truth. You can't just sit by and wish your problems away. God, I, I need help. This one, you know, Ebele was stuck between between God's will for his life and it's his, his mother, his mother's will for his life. So he was stuck between God and his mother. He does not know whether he should follow, you know, because according to him, he felt he said he has never, you know, disrespected his mom. He has never gone against her word, and you know. So he, he, he did not know what to do. He didn't know whether to go with God or to go with his mother. But obviously, we all know that he is meant to go with the will of God for his life. Because the will of your parents, the will of your mother, even your own will, your own desire for yourself might fail. But the will of God for your life would never, ever fail. The will of God for your life would never fail. And you know, there, <laughs> no matter what happens, the will of God will still be done last, last. The will of God will still be done. So it just depends on you to pray it into existence, to pray it into, into fulfillment. You know, you pray until something happens. You pray until your joy is full. Commit, if, if you are in this kind of situation, commit your mom, commit your dad, commit whoever is standing as a barrier to you going for the will of God. Commit them into the hands of God. Commit them to the hands of God and you will see that God will God will do what he ought to do. You know, God's plan, the, the Bible says that the, God's purpose for man can never go thwarted. It can never go unfulfilled. So it is left for you to pray it into existence, to pray until something happens. Until something happens. And, you know, at the end, I think Abele actually said that, you know, he, he talked to his mom about it, you know. You know, sometimes you might think that, oh, maybe the person I want to talk to about this might not be someone who is ready to listen. But that's what you are meant to settle in the place of prayer. You know, the, the, the spiritual controls the physical. So what you've settled in the, in the spiritual is definitely settled in the physical already. 
So I pray that the will of God will always be done in our lives and the strength, the grace that we need to follow God's will for our lives may be granted unto us in Jesus' name. Pray, pray unto God. God, God, God takes absolute control. Okay, so that brings me to the fourth point from this scene. Sir, those, those meetings formed the foundation for us. Just, just look at us now. God, God is really helping us. He barely the man of God. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> ah! Hey, Billy, you've sir. always had your eyes on Tony. Ah. Uh, mm. <laughs> you think I don't understand? <laughs> <coughs> Ah, uh, don't go there. The way you were coughing the moment you walked into the um, Bible study. <laughs> sir, I am guilty. I am guilty, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. And yes, I told you not to go into a relationship yet. And because I sensed the timing wasn't right. Sir, I, I really wish I had listened. I, I am really sorry for disobeying you. I'm sorry, sir. Just, just look at where it has landed me. It's fine. It's fine. God will help me. I will talk to Duny. Okay, so yeah, Uncle Stephen had told um, Ebele not to go into a relationship yet while he was still, I think, in 400 level and Ebele was in 100 level. That she's not going into a relationship with Duny yet because it felt like the timing wasn't right. The timing wasn't right. You know, many of us, you know, we just want to, you know, experience this relationship thing. No matter, no matter what is going on around, no matter what God is saying, we don't want to hear. We just want to, you know, see what this relationship thing is about. But, you know, we, we need to hear God. We need to hear God. We need to know what he's saying. It's not just about, oh, my friend is in a relationship, so I need to go into a relationship or... I'm so close to this sister, I'm so close to this brother. Let me, you know, use this relationship to hold her down or hold him down. You know, that's that's not it. That's not it. There is more to it than that. God, God, God has a plan and a purpose for everyone. You know, the book of Ecclesiastes 3, 3 verse 1 says that there is to everything under the earth, there is a season, and to every time a purpose. So there is time for everything. There is time for everything. You have to you have to listen to God to know what He's saying at every season in your life. At every season, it's not just left for you to, to say, okay, this season is a general one that everybody knows that okay, it's time to go into a relationship, it's time, you know, it's time to propose, it's time to do this, time to do that. No, you have to wait, wait to hear God. Wait, you know, your season is different from someone else's season. What God wants to take you through in your season is different from what he wants to take another brother through or another sister through. So you need to be patient enough to hear what God is saying about your season. Maybe God still wants you to, you know, get so close to him so that when you go into that relationship, you will go with the right motives. You will not go with the wrong motives. You will not go, you know, to, to do the worldly things and all but you go because God has told you to go and God has given you the things to do. And God has said that, okay, this, this, this is where I want you to be. This is who I want you to be with. Not just because you feel like it is right. Because trust me, our desires, <laughs> sometimes they, 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 they are, if, if we don't, you know, make sure they are aligned to God, they can bring destruction upon us. They can, they can turn up. They, you know they can just they can what's what's the word they can make us go into the wrong direction so i pray that the almighty god will help us there is time for everything there is time for everything so if god is telling you to wait please wait patiently and wait in prayers wait in studying the word wait wait in fellowshipping with him like fellowship with him fellowship with him fellowship with him and become so so into him become so close to him that you guys become inseparable that whenever you want to take a step, take a step god lets you know that okay yes this is where you should tread your feet on this is where you should go this is where you shouldn't go 
pray that the almighty god will help us to understand the times and seasons that we are in in jesus name amen so that brings me to the fifth point the fifth point this scene you will be fine everything is good This lady came to the fellowship asking after you. She introduced herself as your fiancé. Yes, uh, all right, um, yes, I'll see you later. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Maka, Maka! What do you think you are doing? What are, what are you doing showing up in my university without an... Let me check your phone to see how many missed calls you have. Okay, fine, fine. I'm sorry, my phone was on silence. Hey, but what, what are you doing here? Hey, no kwana Hey, well, since you refused to come home to me, let's come and meet you here. Huh. Oh, wait, are you not happy to see me? And and you introduced yourself as my fiance. What's that about? Hey, no kwana huh. Am I not? <laughs> Look, Ebele, wait. You want me to come and make sure how you've been treating me in the past few months? Oh eh? You've never asked me if I've eaten or how my journey went. <laughs> For goodness sake, Ebele. I came all the way from Enugu just to come and see you. Do you know how many rivers I crossed just to come and see you? Do you? And yet, actually, as if I'm, I'm, not, I'm not important to you. <laughs> Hmm. Know what you want. Know what you want. Know, no, actually, you should know what God wants for you. Yes, that's the point. Know what God wants for you. Know what God wants for you. See, Ebele did not, when Amaka came over to meet him in the school, you know, okay, some other guys would have, you know, accepted, uh, maybe, okay, maybe, you know, they, they did not have it in mind to uh, accept that to to marry her or anything but you know some other guys would have allowed that to stay in the school and through that you know he's already drifting away from the will of god for his life but instead ebele allowed amaka to leave he allowed her to go he did not make her stay or when she wanted to stay he did not say okay it's okay for her to stay no he told her to leave he explained everything to her i guess he explained everything to her and you know she left even after all the drama going and coming she finally left you know so know know what god wants for you don't don't, don't be like this eh don't <laughs> don't be don't be corny know what god wants for you and follow what god wants for you start walking in what god wants for you yeah there's no need to toy with the devil there's no need to you know to play with the devil you know, he could have been playing with the devil if he had allowed Amaka to stay. But he knew, he, he knew the will of God for his life. So, he, you know, please go. <laughs> go and let the will of God be done in my life. So, know what God wants for you. Resist the devil and he would flee from you. And the Bible did not say you should play with the devil, rub the devil's head or something. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Just like Joseph, he resisted the temptations of the devil resisted so we should learn to resist and i pray that the almighty god will help us never to fall into the trap of the enemy in jesus name so that brings me to my sixth point which is from this scene where billy ah oh, sir glad to be sharing your table sir how are you doing sir um and how is clcf clcf god has really been faithful how about you how's everything Let me be honest with you. Okay. I'm exhausted. Wow. I never knew leadership is as frustrating as this. I I I I feel like I'm losing my mind. Mm. I 
thought I could do it. Yes, I, I, I thought I could handle it at least. I, I was uh, a cost rev for two years. But I feel, I feel like a failure. A, a total F9. Oh, no. Tell me, tell me. How did you do it? Or how are you doing it right now? Because it looks so perfect that you were able to lead uh, a fellowship as large as CLCF successfully. It's simple. By submitting myself to the higher leadership of the Holy Spirit. You know, leadership becomes burdensome when one tries to do it leaning on his own understanding. A spiritual leader must learn to lead by the Spirit. Sir, you must pay attention to your personal relationship and work with God. God's work in you is much more important than His work through you. This thing talks about leadership. Leadership. You know, Brother Dunsi was, was tired. According to him, he said he was exhausted. So, Brother Dunsi, he was exhausted. I, you know, when I saw his character and, you know, how he acted and all, I felt like, okay, baby, he's far from God. Honestly, that was the first thing I, I, I thought. I thought he was far from God. And then he confirmed my thoughts when he said he was exhausted and was asking a Billy on how for help for help or on how he could you know run the, the fellowship you know successfully that made me know that okay maybe he was actually close with god but then he went farther away from god and that was why all those boss authoritative stuff came all those bossy stuff so, you know, Ebele said a lot of beautiful things. He said leadership works by submitting to the will and the direction of the Holy Spirit. And that's just the summary of it all. Submitting yourself to the will of the Holy Spirit. For example, Brother Dunsi, if he had submitted himself to the will of the Holy Spirit, some places where he was being authoritative, where he was shouting and attacking, it, you know, the Holy Spirit would have led him on what to do. The Holy Spirit would have, you know, made him understand that, okay, this is not, this is not what you should be doing. This is what you should be doing. You should be praying. You should see that this is not ordinary. And you should be praying. You know, the Holy Spirit is, gives direction. It gives direction. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and remain in darkness. So, Ebele also stated that, it is burdensome when you lean on your own understanding. When you lean on your own understanding, oh, I can do this. Okay, you you know, there's a problem. I begin to, you know, think, okay, maybe we should go this way. When you just have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you have the Holy Spirit that you can just ask and he will just lead you on what to do. It will direct you. Once you begin to pray, you know, you just see that, okay, you're, you're taking this path and it's actually the right path. It's actually where there is. Or it just tells you that, okay, this is what you should do. And this is how you should do it. Okay, maybe you should start praying. Start praying. You know, create a prayer group with your escorts and all of that. So, leadership is burdensome when you lean on your own understanding. And the Bible already says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Don't do things according to the way you seem it, it's right. Don't do things according to the way you think it's best. Because, <laughs> man, we are, we are far. We are, uh, the, the way we think, is it's quite far from the way God thinks. So it's not just better to just follow the, the beautiful way that God thinks. And we should just walk in that path for our lives. And, you know, someone once said that to lead people, you must first be led by God. You cannot lead if you are not led by God. Well, well, then well, what, what do you want to, you know, tell your followers? How do you even want to lead them in the way of the Lord when you are not allowing God to lead you yourself? So you must follow God closely and you must be led by the Spirit. You must be led by the Spirit of God be led by the spirit of god and you must pay attention with your walk with god and not only your walk for god you know this many times this is where i think um something like that was mentioned in the movie that god's work in you is more important than god's work through you so what god is doing in you you know 
many times the word God gives us, it is first for ourselves. You know, those all these things that we receive and we say Rema and all, it is first for yourself, for you to use that Rema, check your life. How is your life aligning with this Rema? What is this Rema talking about? That my life is not is not manifesting and all. Before you will not be able to go and post it on your WhatsApp status and, and you know, release the Rema then it will bless all that because if you just go rush 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 and just go and drop it on your status like that or or just go and preach it like that and you yourself you you know you've not started manifesting those things you've not started fulfilling those things that were revealed to you how how, how would you lead people how would you lead people it would be hard to believe because what you are preaching you you you're not you are not you are not living what you are preaching so even as you are working for God, don't let your work with God be affected. Don't let your Bible study time be affected. Don't let your prayer time uh, or your fasting time or your fellowship time with the Holy Spirit, don't let it be affected because you cannot just be giving, giving, giving and you don't have any place you are receiving from. You cannot give what you don't have. It will get to a point, once you have given everything, you will not have anything left. You will not have anything left. So, stay in the presence of god stay there soak yourself in it in fact when you do that the almighty god will will reveal things to come reveal things that are happening and give you solution give you insight revelation and many of of those things so don't let your work with god suffer while you are working for god because they are they are inseparable the two are quite important your work with god and your work your work with God and your work for God. You cannot do without it. So if you are working for God and you are not working with Him, there is a problem. And if you are working with God and you are not working for Him, there is also a problem. So they are intertwined and you know you must learn to just balance the two. I pray that the Almighty God will help us to lead like Him, to be led by Him also. In Jesus' name. Amen. So that brings us to the eighth point. And that comes from this scene. Tonight's prayer meeting was wonderful. Hope we give glory to Jesus. Thank God for the visitation. Yes, as we were praying, I saw Donny sitting under a heavy cloud of darkness. I just want to die. I really need to see her. When can I come around to check on her? Well, I'll text you when you come around and we'll continue praying for her. Alright. Felix and Turayo and some uh, another guy were praying. We we're praying and you know after the prayer, Felix told Turayo that he God revealed something to him that he saw Duni on the, in a cloud of darkness or something like that. So, you know, and that's the point is revelation comes when you pray. Revelation comes when you wait on God in prayers. God will reveal things to you. Because if you don't pray about the problem, you just see that the problem is there. You are in the dark. Nothing is happening. But you know, the moment you begin to pray, light, light comes in. There is light. There is light and it overcomes every darkness. And you understand there is revelation. So we must not neglect the place of prayer. You must not neglect the place of prayer. See, sometimes we go through some things and we just see that the the the, the challenge is not going, the, the, you know, there is no progress and all of that. And you just wonder what is happening. But the moment you start praying, you start seeing the problem and God start giving, giving, starts giving you the solution. And you see that progress begins to happen. You begin to make progress. So we must not neglect the place of prayer. I must not also neglect the prayer of agreement. 
the prayer of agreement you know if the bible says one will chase a thousand and two will chase ten thousand it's it's good to pray alone it's good to be on your own yes god will be able to talk to you one-on-one -on -one. you will also be able to be free with god and talk to god one-on-one -on -one. but we should also not neglect the fellowship of the brethren just like god god at the the word of god admonished us and also a prayer of agreement that says as if two of you shall agree on agree on a thing on hurt that it will come to pass it will come to pass so we must neglect the prayer of agreement coming together to pray having a prayer partner having a prayer partner having someone you can pray with somebody someone that can even strengthen you when you are weak so there are sometimes that you would not feel like praying but when you have someone that you can just call on okay my friend oh yeah please um i'm already feeling you know one kind one kind it's time to pray and you know you guys just come together and pray it might even be over the phone it might be on whatsapp it might, it might be through any means as the spirit leads you you will just pray and fellowship and you strengthen each other just like iron sharpened iron now moving to another point okay and that's the next point that's the next point so this scene yeah she should be here anytime soon yeah yeah and there she is <laughs> don't need to need don't speak what is, ah, ah, ah. what is it what do you people want from me all of you should leave me alone you guys should leave me alone i'm tired I get it. I get it. I know I'm a terrible person. I'm a useless daughter and I'm a terrible leader. Nobody wants to be with me. I'm no good to anyone. I get it. So you guys should leave me alone. Leave me. I get it. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Sorry, I'm tired. Sorry. I'm so so sorry for posting at that. It's fine, Doni. We are here for you. Mm -hmm. We have been praying for you. And we have come to remind you that God loves you so much. Very much. He has accepted you in the beloved. He has called you his own. You are precious in his sight. <laughs> Tony, come with us, let's take a stroll. Yeah, we, we, now let's declare God's yeah. word. I am not rejected. <laughs> the Lord has called me. I am, I am not, not rejected. rejected. The Lord has called me his own. I am not worthless. I'm the half of God's eyes. I am not worthless. I'm, I'm the half of God's eyes. I am a chosen generation, a royal priest. I am a chosen generation, a royal priest. I am more than conqueror through him that loves me. I am more than conqueror through him that loves me. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will never leave me. Not forsake me. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Yeah. I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. The light of his life shines in me. Therefore, darkness can never overpower me. Yes! Oh, Glory. Hallelujah. The point is having the right friends. Having the right friends. You know, the, the benefit of having godly friends cannot be overemphasized. So we must have, we must have godly friends because the, the the Bible says in Proverbs twenty seven verse seventeen it says we must we must not neglect this we must not neglect this I know the Bible also says that we should not be conformed to the pattern of this world the Bible says that we should we should you know do away with evil communications what does what communion does light have with darkness you know the Bible says that we should not be um we should not be equally yoked with unbelievers. We should not be we should not be yoked with unbeliever or unbelievers <laughs> with unbelievers so having godly friends can the benefits cannot be overemphasized because we strengthen each other we just look at this scene this scene now that um you know Turayo, um and all of them you know they were praying and god revealed something to them and then and Felix said he will come over to pray with Dunsi. With Dunsi, imagine if Dunsi had no 
godly friend imagine that a friend that was with her to Ryo. imagine if she was an unbeliever her life would have been so 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 unbearable you know her living would have been so so unbearable for unbearable for her she would have been so much overwhelmed no one to encourage her you know so this is the need of having people with like minds people with you know like beliefs as you uh, with with yours so I pray that Almighty God will help us and surround us with godly friends and help us also to, to make godly friends. So the next point is from this scene. And you know, this scene links to what we just said about having godly friends. You know, when they came to pray with Duni and you know, they just, they, they, they came to encourage her and you know, she was just, she broke down and so they decided to go on the walk and they started confessing the word of god they started helping her to remember that this is the devil at work and she needs to start confessing her identity in christ started stating who she is who the word of god says she is and you know she the the devil the the awful things that the devil has reminded her of she begin she began to you know reject them and began to confess what the word of god says against those things that the devil has said because that is what the devil hates to hear the devil hates to hear the word of god because you know the word of god is quick alive and powerful so the moment it comes out of your mouth it comes out with power it comes out with authority that is the authority that the almighty god has given us over the devil the word of god so the devil is to hear is that's why you must be able to you must have the word in you so that whenever because the devil will not will not come in physical you know with horns and all of that you know it would come it would come like a it might even be like a thought just like a thought it can come in different ways as he likes but that is none of your business your business is you confessing that word against him so as it's coming like this give him the word and he flees give him the word and he flees and you know though the devil does not give up oh, the devil does not give up but you also remind him that you have a god also that never sleeps and that never slumbers because you know after even this confession and all that they were they went on a show and they began to confess he still came back when she was studying a book you know when she wanted to read for exam you know she just started thinking and thinking and she she confessed the word at that point again she confessed that she's a success that she reads she's focused and all of that and the devil fled and she was able to read so the devil does not give up so you also as a child of god you must not give up you must not give up on studying the word you must not give up on confessing it and believing it you must not give up on praying you must not give up on fellowship with god these things are very important. The word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. So you must always have the word of God in you. Because it's not when the devil comes, I just be going to search for what the word of God says. Imagine you're not even with your Bible at that point. So what would you do? So that's why you must have the word of God right inside of you. Right inside of you. So that brings us to our next point, which is from this scene. I'm not insinuating anything though. I just feel a need to define our friendship okay. so we can be clear. Um, I'm in a committed relationship. Do you're fine. You're fine, though. Perfectly. Right. We should do. Um, her name is Idara. Okay. She's currently serving in Gombe State. Hey, <laughs> back to you. Felix defined his friendship. Hmm. Many of our brothers today, many of our sisters today, they lead, you know, they lead guys on. You just see them, they are very close and all of that. And, you know, and this brother has it, all he has in his mind is just friendship. But the sister is not having friendship. She's already thinking about the future. She's already thinking about their children and marriage and everything. So learn to define your friendship. Don't lead a sister on, don't lead a brother on and just, you know, and just leave at any point you like. We are, you know, we are humans. We are humans. So no matter how, how spiritual we are, we, you know, we still have emotions. 
we still have emotions i pray that our emotions will be controlled by the holy spirit in jesus name so always define your friendship if you see that okay you're already getting too close to this person or with this person and all you have in mind is just friendship and you know that okay <clears throat> this person might be thinking of something else or not, even though you might not think you might not want to to believe that the person is thinking about something you might just you know make it clear that we are friends we are friends if we do that we will save ourselves a lot of this ad break without being in a relationship you know you are not dating someone because you are just close and you believe that okay maybe the person wants to be in a relationship with you and on the other and the person does not want to do that so and also if it's you don't 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 lead someone on knowing that okay the person might be seeing you as as a as a boyfriend or as a girlfriend then you two, you're not just go on okay let's 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 be doing let's let's be playing i know in your mind that you don't have those thoughts towards such person or you don't even want such thing then you just because the person feels like that then you don't see anything and you just continue you carry on then at a the point you not just tell the person that oh you're that you have a fiance and all of that and you just you know shatter the person please don't do that as children of god define your friendship define whatever ship you are in if it is a friendship define it if it is a relationship you want go and talk to god and define it to be a relationship don't 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 lead someone on and just drop them off don't be be close to a person and the person will think that okay we are going in this direction that i think we are going and you just you know come and shatter everything so felix defined his ship with mozzarella which was friendship okay so that brings us to the next point which is in this scene God in his compassion will restore us, will bring us back to our Yes! God is answering our prayers already. Father. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Lately, the Lord has been dealing with me with a lot of things, and I... Brother Dunsi had recovered. Had recovered his place with God. So, you know, I even realized that in this place, the, the sitting arrangement changed. Before, they were sitting in like a kind of corporate and, you know, authoritative <laughs> authoritative arrangements but you know this time we are sitting in circles you know and they are just discussing and you know he apologized he took to corrections that's the point taking to corrections you've been you've been giving an advice you've been told about your wrong so now what are you doing about it are you being adamant or are you you know accepting these corrections because you know god loves people who take to corrections yeah, so we must learn to take corrections. We must learn to take corrections. He, he, like, we must even want, like, love people to evaluate us, you know, evaluate our spiritual life and see how we are doing. Are we really behaving like God? Are we really living like Christ? Or are we, are we not living like Christ? Are we showing some works that are of the flesh and not of the spirit? You know, we must be even willing to, to accept these corrections and take it to God. Oh, God. I want you to take this out of me and I want you to bring this into me by your grace. You know, so we must we must be ready. Because even David, David said in the Bible, he said, he said, Lord, search my heart if there be any iniquity daring. You know, we want God to search us and make sure that everything inside of us, everything deep down is truly about him and all to his glory. Nothing more. So we must be ready to take corrections take corrections i trust me it's not easy to take correction it takes the holy spirit to help us so cry to god cry to god to help you to help you take to corrections if if they tell you that you are you are proud 
then okay don't don't argue and shout hey make me proud <laughs> or something like that or say ah uh, what do you mean i'm not proud or try to defend yourself just okay now you know because if you're doing that you're actually showing what they are telling you you know you're actually showing the the character they are telling you about so take to corrections if for example if they tell you you are if someone tells you you are proud just take it to god in prayer lord i do not want to be proud you can also search yourself you can search yourself be honest with yourself then take it to god and tell god lord i remove the spirit of pride and give me the spirit of humility remove the spirit of anger and give me the spirit of love and you know just like that remove the works of the flesh and endow in me the fruit of the spirit so thank god thank god i pray the almighty god will answer all our prayers in jesus name so the last point we are now wise we are one family we got a way and we stick together we burn together complement each other we got we we are winners very much winners when we keep the fun 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 the holy spirit can only move when there is unity where there is unity and when there is unity the holy spirit can only move if you remember the upper room experience you know the disciples disciples and again god told them to wait so they waited for now for the appointed time so if god is telling you to wait now wait because an appointed time is coming so they waited for the appointed time and they were in one accord one accord doesn't only really mean that they were holding hands and all of them were together in a place but it also means that they were in one accord even in their spirits they are thinking everything they were in one accord they were in unity they had the same thoughts which is Jesus, you know, everything, they were focused on God. So the Holy Spirit can only move when there is unity, when there is unity. So please promote unity. Don't be an object of disunity. Don't be an object of violence. So only this is in prayers. <laughs> and also don't rejoice at other people's downfall. You know, don't rejoice when your christian brothers your christian sisters when they fall we should pray that they should come back up we should pray for their revival we should pray for a revival for them we should not be happy and we should live in love because that is the greatest commandment love that is who our god is he is love he is love he does not only you know he does not only have the characteristics of love he is also love himself so he is love personified so don't don't wish people to fall don't see this christian race is not a competition so don't compete with anybody you know only only focus on god and when your brother is falling pray for them pray for them and talk to them don't be happy about it don't ignore it okay so thank god for this beautiful session i'm so blessed and i know you're so blessed also so if this review has blessed you and please go and watch the movie the bond please watch 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 i'll put the link below in the description area so please like share comment and please subscribe to my youtube channel so that you will get more of this beautiful holy spirit inspired content Anthony. how have you been i'm good we need to talk about what don't worry let's let's just go somewhere so we can talk oh i'm safe and you are safe come on let's let's go somewhere quiet so we can come Jenny, please sit thank you
Like it has been ages. I know. Right? <laughs> I have so much I want to say. I don't even know where to anyway. begin. Okay. Okay. First of all, I must apologize. I'm really sorry for the way things were between us. Really sorry. I thought I was going to have a carryover. It was really tough for me then. But you didn't. You got that first class. Duni, Duni with the braids. Please, let me draw. <laughs> See, I, I must, I must confess, I am always proud of you. Thank you. Always. Hey, Billy. Yeah. What was going on with you at the time? Okay, the truth is, it was my mom. My mom wanted me to marry a long-standing friend of mine, Amaka, and then Amaka was so into me. <laughs> It was all just so confusing, seriously. Oh, I see. Yeah. So is Amaka now, yeah? Um, no. See, Duni, I've talked with my mom. And I've talked with Amaka. I know what I want, Duni. And I know what God wants for me. Duni, my decision to love you has not changed. I still love you very much. And yes, it is you I want to spend the rest of my life with. Tony, please give me the chance to love you. Do you make me the happiest man on earth by marrying me? Please. Duni? That's how I dress, you know. You oh god. Have mercy. Have mercy, they have to take the light. Oh, the, the benefit of having godly friends cannot be over. Hey, 